Hey there everybody, it's Aubrey here. There are many examples of phenomena and statistics in our universe that are incomprehensibly difficult to actually imagine. The scale of what is truly tiny, like electrons, and exceptionally large, like supermassive black holes, is mind-bendingly difficult to comprehend. Like the fact that we can only see 0.000002% of the stars in the Milky Way, or the teeniest, tiniest particles that we know exist are 43 billion billionths of a centimeter, or in the case of today, the fact that this GNSS carrier board can locate you anywhere on Earth within 10 millimeters of accuracy. That means that you could practically track an ant as it picks up the crumb that you dropped and take it to its hill and it'll be precise. Well, this board would crush that ant, but you get the point. Welcome the brand new SparkFriend Micromod GNSS carrier board. For a board that can produce really tiny numbers, it's got a whole lot more going on that makes it a fantastic addition to your Micromod collection. This board is based off of Ublox's ZF9P module, which provides exceptionally high positioning. It can simultaneously track all of the satellite constellations within the Global Navigation Satellite System, or GNSS. That includes GPS, which is the US system, Galileo, the European system, Baidu, the Chinese system, and GLONASS, the Russian system. Furthermore, this board can read in both L1CA and L2C bands from GPS, which are fully operational for civilian, aka U, usage. The L1CA band, which runs at 1574.43 MHz, is a legacy signal, and it's broadcasted by all currently operational satellites. It's traditionally all that positioning devices have been able to receive. This means that the device was limited to track a single radio signal from each satellite. However, it's also more susceptible to multipath errors, which are when the signal bounces off of large objects like buildings and the signal gets echoed around, making it difficult to determine a precise location. But this module can receive both the L1CA and the L2C bands of GPS, where the L2C band runs at 1227.5 megahertz. Instead of just relying on one signal to determine location, this module can track more than one signal from each satellite, each on a different radio frequency. Plus, when both signals are used together, the L2C signal is sent out more frequently, so it allows for faster initial signal acquisition than with just the L1 alone. In the case of the ZF9P chip on this module, the time to first fix is 25 seconds when cold and two seconds when running hot. The fact that this GNSS carrier board has access to both frequencies means that it's capable of RTK, or real-time kinematics, and can produce 10 millimeters of three-dimensional accuracy. The ZF9P chip is unique in its ability to perform operations as both a rover and a base station to allow for RTK. Even without RTK, this board is still capable of producing an accuracy of two and a half meters. And by golly, you can take this module anywhere it has operational limits of four Gs, it has a max altitude of 50 kilometers, and a max velocity of 1118 miles per hour. It's pretty perfect for your weekend trip on a rocket. We've added all the good bits and pieces that you need, like a reset and boot button, and a variety of LEDs that can be disabled via the jumper pads if needed. They indicate VIN, or input voltage, 3.3 volts of power, PPS, or pulse per second, of the GPS L1 and L2 frequencies, RTK, and geofencing. There's a 2 amp resettable fuse and 3.3 volt 1 amp voltage regulator that are built into the board for power. And for those looking to bypass the fuse and measure current consumption for low power testing, we've added a jumper. This module also comes equipped with a variety of connectors and ports. It has two USB type C ports which can be used for power and programming, one quick connector to easily add quick enabled I2C devices to your project, an SMA port, and space for a Micromod processor board of your choosing through the M.2 connector. It also has five communication ports, four of which are all active simultaneously. It has a USB-C, which enumerates as a COM port, UART1 with 3.3 volts TTL, UART2 for RTCM reception with 3.3 volts of TTL, I2C via the one quick connector or broken out pins, and SPI. Also, the processor on this board can access all of the outputs from the F9P. Plus, we've included a rechargeable backup battery 
that not only helps keep the latest satellite data available for up to two weeks, but also helps warm start the module to decrease the time to first fix. As said before, it's the difference of two seconds warmed up versus 25 cold. We've got an exceptionally extensive Arduino library for UBlox modules with examples ranging from simply getting positional data to configuring the ZF9P as a base station to geofencing. And the Arduino library shows how to read all sorts of positional data without the constant serial pulling of NEMA. Okay, so this board can do practically any spatial task with incredible precision and tons of configuration options. And now that the ZF9P chip is in the Micromod ecosystem, you can take advantage of these capabilities with half a dozen different processors that can be easily swapped in or out. And you can add or communicate with other Micromod carrier boards through a peer-to-peer -peer network. Let's test it out. This is Ublox's software called uCenter, and it's a really easy way to visualize the spatial data you're collecting with the ZF9P. Once the module is connected, it'll pop up as a USB serial COM port, and you can select the specific COM port that is your RTK board, and it'll immediately start reading in data. That is to say that your antenna has a clear view of the sky. The first thing you'll notice is that there's a lot of data being displayed all at once. These menus tell you the world position of the board, the receiver status, satellite levels and elevation, satellite position in the sky, a speed meter, a compass, an altitude meter, and a watch with the current UTC time. If we close out of most of these windows to clear up space, you'll notice just how many satellite systems this board is communicating with. Satellites from GLONASS, GPS, BIDO, we can see them all in real time. Now, there are multiple different consoles to read in data on uCenter. There's the packet console, which lists all incoming messages and provides information about message length and type. The binary console, which lists all incoming messages in binary and ASCII format. And the text console, which displays the content messages in textual form, such as NEMA messages. We can also view the module's position on a map by using a static map API from Google. It's a very easy key to obtain. It's just a matter of linking an account to the Google Maps platform, enabling Maps Static API, and copying the key into the access code bar in uCenter. You'll see within your Google Cloud Platform dashboard that the API is being trafficked. The map can update in real time as your position moves. Here, I'm in a car driving, and you can see the map update. The different menus within uCenter update too to show my different positioning, which satellites it's communicating with, and the direction and speed at which I'm going. You can also export the database to a KML file that can be loaded into Google Earth so you can visualize your position data in 3D. uCenter also has geofencing capabilities within their preferences menu. We can set the boundary of a geofence in latitude and longitude, as well as a radius. And then, when the module leaves that radius, it will indicate that it is no longer inside that geofence. If you can't comprehend just how many things this module is capable of, that's okay. We'll just add it to the list of immense universe statistics that are simply mind-boggling. But what you should know is that if you have any spatial task at hand, this board is the powerhouse that can do the work for you. The fact that it's already in Micromod, so it's made for customization, and the ridiculously precise numbers that this U-Block chip can output, this will surely be the first board you'll go to when doing any geospatial work. So what are you waiting for? Get yours at sparkfun.com today and happy hacking. Hey there everybody, it's Oliver here and I've already forgotten my first line like I always do on my first time. Let's start it over. If you cannot blah, 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 that was silly. <laughs> Never do that, you know? Never do that. Okay, again. And the precisely, the precisely. Oh, the fact that this GNSS carrier board, hard to imagine. I don't know why I can't get this today. Oh. Jeez, RTK, 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 RTK. <laughs> We're just going to do one yeah. quick turnaround. This we'll is, turn you got it. and now that the ZF9P chip is in the micro, sorry, my eyes like twitching. I don't know if you can <laughs> see it.